In Boston's industrial North End, there is a small, easy to miss historical plaque. It marks one of the strangest disasters in history. On a January afternoon in 1919, patrolman Frank McManus found himself shouting into his transmitter. He could barely believe what he was saying. Send all rescue vehicles and personnel immediately. There's a wave of molasses coming down Commercial Street. The Purity Distilling Company was in the molasses business, but they weren't in it to make syrup or sweets. They were in it to make booze and bombs. And they were in a rush. They had filled up their largest tank with as much molasses as they could find because they were racing against prohibition. They needed to get this stuff turned into liquor and sold before it was illegal. The tank that this molasses was stored in was huge. It was the size of a building and contained 2.3 million gallons of molasses. And when it burst, a two-story tall wave of molasses went flying out in all directions, and it was traveling at 35 miles per hour. And it wasn't just the sugary tide that was deadly. The tank itself became a weapon. Huge pieces of metal went flying into buildings, and the rivets that had held the tank together shot out like bullets. As the wave of molasses and the debris it carried went down Commercial Street, it picked up entire buildings by their foundations and just floated them out towards the harbor. Molasses came pouring in through people's windows, and if you were living, for example, in a basement apartment, you were in a lot of trouble. To give you an example of the power of this disaster, a steel beam that held up the elevated train was destroyed, obliterated, and the train tracks fell to the ground, and it was only by luck that it missed taking out a train with it. Molasses covered everything, and as you struggled, it pulled you into it. According to the Boston Post, horses died like so many flies on sticky flypaper. And it wasn't just horses that died. The Boston molasses flood killed 21 people. Author Stephen Paleo, who wrote the best book about this called Dark Tide, described it thusly. Molasses covered the street waist deep and swirled and bubbled about the wreckage. Only an upheaval, a thrashing about in the sticky mass, showed where any life was. And this illustrates really how nightmarish this was. The disaster caused a hundred million dollars worth of damage in today's money, all done by a wave of molasses. This was the company's fault. They were grossly negligent and they knew there was a problem. The tank was built with the wrong metal. It was built to half the thickness it should have been. The night watchman complained that it creaked and groaned at night under the stress and so much molasses was leaking from the sides that they painted it brown so you wouldn't notice. After one of the longest trials in US history, the company was finally found guilty and paid a million dollar settlement. It took weeks and weeks to clean up the molasses left after this disaster, and the neighborhood was said to be sticky to the touch for years. When the molasses flood took 21 lives and destroyed a neighborhood, you'd never know it today. The only thing that marks it is a tiny little sign. But to this day, if you talk to a local resident, they will swear that on a hot summer's afternoon, you can smell the sweet aroma of molasses. If you want to learn more about this, I cannot recommend Dark Tide highly enough. Uh, it's wonderful, it goes into a lot of historical context, and it goes deep into this incredibly elaborate, complicated trial. It's, it's a really wonderful book. So I think the Boston Molasses Flood is the strangest disaster to ever happen, but if you know of other disasters that you think are on a similar kind of scale of, of strangeness, I would be really interested to hear about them.